Catholic Church discourage new members? In just a moment, let's ask a priest. Ask a Priest, a spontaneous and candid discussion designed to answer your questions about what Catholics believe and why they believe it. Presented by the Catholic Radio and Television Apostolate in an effort to promote a greater understanding among men. Welcome once again to Ask a Priest. At this time, it's my privilege to take questions that have been sent to us by you listeners and ask those questions of a priest who is our guest for the particular program. And we ask not only what it is that Catholics believe, but we try and find out a little bit about why they believe as they do. Today, I'm happy to welcome to the program once again Father John R. McGuire, who is the assistant pastor of St. Monica's Parish. Father, welcome again to the program. It's nice to have you with us again. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Without any further ado, let's get to our question for today, which I might mention has been sent to us by a listener who's requested that we not mention his name. And as you know, Father, we're always happy to respect the wishes of our questioners in that regard if they indicate in their letter or their postcard that they don't want their name mentioned. This is what he asked, Father. Most religions are delighted to get new members. They welcome them with open arms. But the Catholic Church practically makes you sign your life away before they let you in the vestibule. Why do you make it so difficult for a person to become a Catholic? Well, first of all, Father, to get into this, why is it that the Catholic Church doesn't seem to make much of an effort at all to solicit new members? You know, Mr. Gardner, I can't imagine anybody getting that impression. From the very moment that Christ founded the church, he commanded his apostles to go forth and teach all nations whatever he had commanded or whatever he had taught to them. And the Acts of the Apostles tell us immediately the apostles heeded this command. And the church has been doing this in, throughout all the centuries of her existence, even down, of course, into our own day. We, where there, there isn't a parish where you don't have a, uh, people coming over and learning about the church, preparing to become converts. Or, uh, Certainly, uh, the, the mission uh, effort of the, w of the church throughout the world is, is one of the outstanding of, of, of any group or denomination uh, today. So I can't see how anyone could say that uh, we're not interested in converts. Well, Father, I think maybe you're looking at this from your point of view. Look at it from mine for a minute. This is what this impression is based on. For example, now, I've never seen a sign on a Catholic church that I've driven past that invited me into... Uh, to uh, your worship services on Sunday morning, for example, or recently when I moved into a new neighborhood, several of my neighbors came to call upon me and invited me to their to non-Catholic uh, uh, worship services to come and join their churches, but nobody came to me from the Catholic parish. I've never been invited to worship on your church on Sunday. Mr. Gartner, if there are other people like you, let me the, be the first to extend an invitation to you. We certainly, you're most welcome. But I, I'm very much surprised that you haven't received one before because uh, in, in practically every diocese, uh, there's an annual program uh, where men go around and ring every doorbell in a neighborhood inviting people to come over and listen to explanations of the church. And you drive by Catholic churches, it's, it's very frequent that you see uh, signs out in front. The, the truths of Christianity, the teachings of the Catholic Church explained on Wednesday nights or Tuesday and Thursday, whatever it is. I'm very much surprised that you haven't seen these signs. Oh, I've seen those signs, and I know what the invitations you're talking about, though, but they're asking me to go back to school. Now, I, I'm not interested in going back to a school again, Father. All I want to do is go to church on Sunday and worship with my neighbors. Mr. Gardner, if this is what you want to do, you are most welcome to do it. We'd be delighted to have you come to Mass on Sunday whenever you want. In fact, if you want to, you can come to Mass every day. As you know, we have Mass every day in our churches. But... Uh, you'd never think of, of telling a person with a brand new car who couldn't drive that, well, sorry, don't bother learning. Or supposing someone gave a, a, a man a, a, a very fine set of carpenter's tools and did, didn't know how to use them. Why, the very first reaction would be, well, go out and get someone to teach you. Now, this is our idea. You see, uh, if a person goes to Mass and has had a certain amount of explanation and instruction on the Mass and on the teachings of the Church, he's able to get much more out of it. In other words, religion places tools into people's hands, and if they know what those tools, tools are and how to use them properly, naturally, uh, what they're doing will be much more beneficial for them. So that's what we're thinking about. What you're trying to say now is that there's more to it than, than just, just uh, going to church on Sunday and just worshiping? Why, why, can't I, why can't I join your church and learn as I go along? Mr. Gartner, whenever a person does something that's important to them, 
uh, they, they give this matter very careful consideration. For example, when a person go, is, is going to buy a home or, or, or even trade an automobile or, or change jobs, certainly. Now, uh, a person who is prudent will go into every possibility before making the decision. Now, this is the way we feel about the church. We feel that a person's church membership is very important to him. Therefore, it's necessary for him to give it complete consideration, and this is the reason for our series of explanations. Well, now, Father, you make it sound like I'm applying for membership in some kind of an exclusive club or something. Now, here, I, I, most churches would, would welcome a member, a, a new member, just if he asked to join, and I take it that you won't. Mr. Gartner, there's nothing exclusive about the Catholic Church. As a matter of fact, the pope or the bishop or the priest doesn't decide who can be a member of the church and who can't. It's a matter of an individual's relationship to his God. You see, religion is between a man or an, and a woman, uh, a man or a woman and their God. And people uh, must decide themselves what they think God wants them to do. But we feel that they should take this matter, the choice of a church, just as seriously as they take the choice of buying a home or changing jobs. So therefore, we feel that they should find out all about Christianity and our own particular church before joining it. Well, then if I understand what you say, it's the important thing is not whether I want to join or not, but I've still got to pass some sort of a, some sort of a test before you'll accept me. Not at all, Mr. Gardner. You see, if you would like to worship with us, if you'd like to come over and participate in our activities, you are most welcome anytime you want to. There's no question of a necessity of taking instructions or listening to explanations. At all. We feel this would be better for you, that you would get more out of it, but it's not necessary at all. But you see, the actual joining of the church is something that hasn't been determined by us at all. It's been determined by Jesus Christ. And before a person is eligible to join, it is necessary for him to believe all of the teachings of Christ. And if he's going to believe them, it's necessary for him to understand them. And you see, if a person would decide to join the church before he understood the teachings and believed them, then he wouldn't be fair to himself, he wouldn't be fair to God, and if we helped him, we wouldn't be fair to him. As a matter of fact, we'd be committing sin. But look, when I, wh why, why don't you just let the prospective convert join your church for a while and see how he likes it? Then after a, a trial period, if he finds that he doesn't like it, well, he can leave and, and go to some other church. Mr. Gardner, the thing that we must remember here is that belonging to the church that Christ founded brings with it great privileges, which we want to share with everybody in the world. But you also must remember that it brings with it responsibilities. And if a person does not understand these responsibilities properly, his chances of fulfilling them are very poor. And we must remember that Christ himself told us, to those to whom more is given, more is expected. So that, uh, after all, in fairness to the person, we must be sure that this individual knows what he's getting into before he joins the church, because otherwise he won't be able to fulfill his duties properly, and thus would be answerable to God. I'm not talking about these duties here and everything, Father. Just as a, as a practical matter, don't, don't you find it very difficult to expect people to submit to what must be a, a really a tremendous change in their way of life and, and to subject themselves to the domination of the rules and regulations of your church? Mr. Gartner, as far as a Catholic is concerned, there is no question of the subjection to, dom to, to dom domination. There is no question of a matter of, of subjecting ourselves to anyone. The thing that we recognize more than anything else in, in our lives is that God wants us to go to heaven, and we don't know how to go. Now, the problem is uh, we, should, we should approach this problem in the very same way that sensible people approach other problems. After all, if, if you wanted to go somewhere and didn't know how to go, you'd seek direction. Now, this is exactly what we do when we want to plan our journey to heaven properly. We seek the direction of the only person that ever lived, Jesus Christ, who knew anything about it. Now, in seeking this direction, we know that Christ himself made it available through his church. So that when I belong to the Catholic Church, I don't see the will of the priest or the will of the pope or the will of anybody but God in what the church tells me. So that rather than being a, do uh, a domination, it's a very great blessing to be able to, told, to be told how I must do something and when I must do it, if I am to please God. Because after all, in this journey to heaven, the important thing is not going there as I see fit or as I would prefer. The important thing is going in God's way 
and of course, as Catholics, we feel we have great assurance of this. Well, Father, getting back to our listener's question here again about these instructions and all these explanations and everything, it, it seems to me that if all that is so necessary, why your church must be so complicated that only college graduates could join it and understand it. Mr. Gartner, that is one of the great beauties of Catholicism. We know that th it is true that there is enough in the Catholic Church and in Christ's teachings to satisfy the curiosity and intellectual interest of the most intelligent people. We know that people could go on and study for their whole lives and never exhaust the possibilities of Christianity as far as information and intellectual interest. But on the other hand, every priest will tell you about the old lady who is sitting in church praying her rosary, who probably had no formal education and very little instruction. And we priests, of course, as you, as you probably know, go to school for long years studying theology and Christianity from every angle that we can. And yet, every priest will tell you that there are people like this old lady whom he envies. People who love God so very much and show their love for God so well with so little knowledge. So, as I say, it's one of the beauties of the church to be able to capture the heart of the most intelligent person and yet also to satisfy those who are not so well trained are not so intelligent. Well, but that's just the point, isn't it, Father? Now, as you say, this, this uneducated old lady here, uh, why, does, why, why does a convert have to be told what he should do? Can't he use some personal judgment in deciding what he should believe? But Mr. Gartner, the problem is this. How do I know personally what Christ wants? It's not what I think I should believe or what I think Christ teaches, but what Christ has actually taught. And that's the beauty of our church. If I want to go and find out not what the priest thinks, but what does Christ want me to do I checked with the church he founded, and this is what the church tells me. Isn't that a great blessing? Well, I, I can't help wondering, Father, that if a, if a convert's got to go through all this preliminary instruction before he can even join your church, well, what must he go through afterwards before he can be on an equal footing with a lifelong Catholic? Mr. Gartner, let me say, first of all, that there is no such a thing as degrees of membership in the church. If a person is a member of the church, he's a member regardless of whether it's five minutes or 50 years. But let me say this, as far as a convert is concerned, there's nothing public about his reception of the church. He just invites the people that he wants to come. And then after he becomes a member, his privileges are the same as any others. His responsibilities are the same, but he has the priest and his sponsor in baptism and his other friends to help him. And I'm sure that every convert will assure you that their lives as Catholics have been most happy. Well, Father, our time is about up. I'd like to thank you for answering this question, and I'd like to thank our listener for sending it in. If any of you who are with us today have questions that you would like us to use on this program, if you'll send them to the station to which you're now listening, we'll be happy to consider them. Thank you again, Father McGuire, and thank you all for being with us. The priest on today's program was Reverend John R. McGuire. The moderator was Carl Gartner. Ask a Priest was presented by the Catholic Radio and Television Apostle. Directed by Dick Tino, this has been a KTVI Public Affairs presentation. <laughs>